Well, kia ora, no mai, haere mai, my fellow brothers, fellow classmates, 1989 to 93. We're back again for video 38, 38, sensational. We're almost at 40. I just can't believe I never would have thought we have, would have come this far, but we have. Now our next interviewee and fellow classmates beaming in live from Australia. He's an upper heart boy. Uh, he had an older brother that went to school uh, just ahead of us, Jono or Jonathan. I remember him well, and it's time to say a massive welcome and kia ora to Greg Watts. Kia ora, Greg. Hey, Ed. How's it going? Yeah. Well. Oh, thanks, mate. It's going really well. And you're looking bloody good, mate. You're looking well. Thanks very much. Now, listen, mate, I know you're coming in live from um, New South Wales there. Um, just a quick update for everyone. How, how's the lockdown and, um, you know, how, how's it affecting you? How, how's it all going? Yep. Um, so obviously lockdowns, uh, you know, putting a bit of pressure on everything. We, um, I think I was, I was just mentioning to you before, last time I went into work uh, on regularly was, uh, you know, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day last year, 2020. Um, and since there, I think I've been into work four times. So yeah, just been sitting, working from this little desk in the corner of, of uh, the bedroom. And um, yeah, just looking forward to uh, getting this vaccination out. I'm getting my shot next week. Um, so hopefully give everyone a bit more freedom. But yeah, currently currently a few issues with the whole, you know, uh, Delta strain coming out and, and uh, there's a bit of panic going on around here, I think. I keep getting all these emails from everybody saying, you know, don't go anywhere, don't do anything. So uh, we're sitting tight for now. Well, hang in there, brother. So no doubt you and those headphones there have become good friends. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> They're like a pilot. Yeah, nice, nice. All right, now take us back. Um, when you first came to stream uh, in 89, so just, just remind the boys where you came from, how many years you ended up doing, and um, just reminisce on your first day at Silverstream. Yeah, so I so I was a uh, up hat boy. I'm a lot of the other fellows that have already done these uh, videos. So there was quite a quite a few of us came from um, St. Jo St. Joseph's, and um, you know we all uh, rocked up to the train station on that first day. I think it was the eight o'clock train or whatever, you know, um, and uh, got to school. Um, I had a fair idea what was going to be happening because obviously John was already there. So um, so we, you know, I, I had. A, I had a bit of an idea what was going on, but obviously it's still a bit daunting. Um, as I said, like I think the used to see a few of the older uh, guys come to St. Joseph's on a Wednesday afternoon because they had, I think they had a half day on a Wednesday and then had the sport on the Saturday. So that's how they used to do it back then. But, um, you know, when we got there, they, you know, we just had the full five days and, and did the sport as well. I'm not sure how it actually worked, but yeah, so I, I had an idea of what was going to go on, but um, yeah, it was still, you know, it's a big place with lots of people and uh you know you went from being the oldest at the school to the youngest and the smallest so yeah good yeah i remember you saint joe's boys you were very close there were a few of you too and and pretty much you all remained together right through the whole time at silver street i think i think most people from from saint joe's did the full five years from from memory uh except maybe troy like he was saying so um so uh yeah but everyone else maybe i think was ever from from memory yeah you know, it's hard to remember but yeah oh it's been look it's been many years so look what did you do the immediate year um leaving stream so what did you do in 94. yeah so 94 so i went straight from um stream to victoria university in wellington so i know a lot of the other guys um went to the started doing the degree out in uh, the cit uh, campus, but I I went into town, so got the training every day and and out. Um, so did a, a a BCA majoring in marketing and, and accounting. So um, yeah, did did that, um, and that was good. So learn a bit there. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I did straight out of school, to university, basically. Oh, well done and congratulations on what you achieved at Vic. Um, what do you do for a job now, Greg? And I guess primarily, what have you done over the, the last, you know, nearly 30 years in occupations? Have you had a few different ones? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah well, yeah, kind of, kind of very, not, not probably all in the same, in the same line, just a few different companies. So when I left uh, um, Vic, I got a job at 
Arthur Anderson just in, in town. So um, they they got taken over by EY. Um, so was there for four years and then um, went to then went over to the UK um, 2001 through to 2009. You know, you only as same as a lot of the other fellas. You know, was only supposed to be two years or whatever, and then just um, carried on. You know, so um, during that time, uh, I was working for a company named uh, Kroll. Uh, most of the time, who you might, I don't know, they like private investigators and also insolvency and stuff like that. I don't know if you ever come across them, what your work. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, and then I went also did a couple of years at Brit Insurance and stuff over there. Um, and and then 2009, I came back, came back to Wellington for a couple of years, um, worked at the, there, was, there wasn't much work when I came back. Um, so got a job at the Wellington City Council supporting the drainage and, and water team which was interesting got a few things fixed got a street sign put up next to my house which was good you know use your contacts for <laughs> that sort of thing and then uh <laughs> got uh then i then i i did about 18 months at anz and then i um came over to sydney in 2012 um younger brother chris was here and a couple of mates um so came over here and then and now i work at uh the beleaguered uh, amp as a um, finance manager there. So been there for, uh, it's almost nine years now. So um, we've been through various restructures and I've had various job title changes, but still there. And um, and yeah, but yeah, like I said, still work, working from home at the moment. Wow, what an awesome different, varied career you've had over the years. Now you just mentioned your younger brother, uh, brother Chris. I, I don't remember Chris, we'll see how much younger uh, to us. Was he than us? Yeah, he was third form when we were seventh form. Okay. Third, yeah, third form when we were seventh form. So those guys came through. Um, yeah, you know, like um, quite a few of us had younger brothers, like like you know, Mike Gallatly's younger brother, Steve Gallatly was there, and you know, you had Dan McGuinness and all those. So all that year, so Chris was all part of those that year, and um, yeah, they all came through. We were the seniors, and they were the third formers. Oh wow! So no, so no doubt he had a nice smooth run then. Yeah, I think he could look after himself anyway. So, hey, do you still keep in touch? Do you still have family in um, Upper Hutt? Uh, Dad's still out there, yeah. And um, and but yeah, not not no no other families really out there. Everyone's in town now. Um, been in town for a few years, so um, yeah, Dad's still out there. Still go out there when I come home and stuff. Go visit out out that way. He's oh. in Trenton now at the moment. Okay. Now you mentioned to me just before, I, I don't know New South Wales terribly well, but you mentioned that you're somewhere yeah. near um, Balmain or Balmain, I know, for the old league team. So where, whereabouts exactly are you in New South yeah. Wales for, for the other brothers that we've got over there in New South Wales? Yeah, so I'm just, if, if you carry on a little bit down the road from Balmain, you get to Dremoyne and then from Dremoyne, it's just into Chiswick. So I think like every other street here is called a different area. So it's kind of like, you know, you, you within the square you don't have to go far to be you know cool be, be in a different part of town um but yeah where i am is called chiswick so it's just over um just past belmain a little bit um probably about 10 k's from the city um but it still takes me about an hour to get in and out on the bus mm. even though it's only you know 10 k's hey mate you still got a wonderful head of here huh, mate don't, i've got the i've got the the print carry on top mate don't let the car fool you <laughs> thing about up there. Um, now, please introduce us to your whanau. So, you, uh, do you, are you married? Do you have children? Yeah. Uh, so, not married. Um, I've got uh, I've got my partner. I live with my partner. Um, I've been with her for for you know um, I don't know I don't know five or so years now, maybe six. Um, and uh, we've got uh, two two little girls. One is uh, Alexis. She was uh, four years old just a couple of weeks back. And one is, uh, and the other one is called Celeste, and she was, she's 18 months old. So she was born just before lockdown, you know, happened. So, um, you know, Alexis, by the time she was one, she'd been to New Zealand half a dozen times, but uh, Celeste didn't actually get to go till April this year to meet everybody because of, uh, you know, travel restrictions. So, yeah, a bit like Chris Fui, I started a bit later. Um, you know, he was mentioning that yeah, his kids are quite young as well. And uh, I don't know, I can't remember what the New Zealand birth certificates look like, but um, over here, as well as putting your date of birth, they actually put your age on the birth certificate. So, you know, it's got the big 44 written right beside my name. So it's just so, <laughs> you know, you're, 
<laughs> okay, you look at that and just go, oh, great, yeah, that was, thanks for that, you know. Oh, that, that means you've still got the magic, mate. you still got the magic. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I tell you, you don't <laughs> feel that old, right? But then you see that written there, you just say, oh, my God, yeah, where's it gone? Yeah, hard. Hey, uh, beautiful names for your uh, daughters as well. Lovely. Cheers. Um, now, look, a particular memory you've got, Greg, I know like the rest of us, you'll have heaps, but is there something that stuck with yeah. you all these years? That you just sort of think about every now and then is something you can share with the rest of the guys of, from your time yeah well well a couple of things i guess so so i guess one thing that's probably uh um something i remember personally is uh, i mean as we know i had i had many many a nickname at uh at st pat's there and in the later years it was um a vj so everyone started calling me vj there <laughs> so uh as you know, yeah so so that song, uh, uh, Lover, Lover, You Don't Treat Me No Good No More, someone had the, uh, you know, um, did the Weird, weird Al on it and, and changed Lover, VJ. Lover to VJ, VJ. Yeah. So, VJ, so, um, VJ, VJ. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, I think in seventh form, we had a fairly large dance in the auditorium there. And um, I think we had Chilton and Sacred Heart come along. And, uh, you know, that song was, had just, you know, sort of come out and was pretty popular. And, uh, and yeah, I remember that, that I, I was prepared for it. I, that song came over, the DJ started playing that song and all you buggers just start singing the song, VJ, VJ, you know, trim me no good no more. And I was just like, oh, it's went with it, you know, but that, that, you know, I get reminded of that, that every time I'm in the car and that song comes on, takes me back, right back to standing in that uh, auditorium and uh you know Mate, should probably change the, that's uh, nothing that's nothing but change love. the buddy radio station that's nothing but love the boys had, had love for you <laughs> yeah i tell you every time that song comes on and it gets played a lot so yeah i go oh. right back there but yeah i think uh just in terms of memories like I, I think i think you mentioned it you know um the the later years were definitely more fun for me um and i think uh you know i think everyone did come together a lot more in those later years, um, mm. you know, everyone like not just stay boys and borders, but I think just the different groups, you know, different lower heart, upper, like everyone sort of, um, you know, um, sort of interacted a lot more and had a lot more fun. And uh, I remember some, you know, pretty pretty big broker games of uh, touchdown on the number one during the summer and stuff like that, where you know everyone was sort of there and and playing. Um, and yeah, so I think you know where, where you're saying about, you know, I think in those. There's some guys that I probably didn't even speak to for the first three years I was there, and then and then later on, um, things got you know everyone was a little bit more, um, you know, a bit more camaraderie around the the, the form. One hundred percent. I I think it's just called growing up, and um, and we just sort of matured a bit, and and and, and also opened up yeah. because I remember fondly by six and seven form. I mean, all groups were mixing. It was pretty awesome, you know. So yeah, yeah. you did, you did yeah. right. You did right. Yeah. Now listen, we're going to get this video out to the rest of the guys this afternoon. I'll be hanging out to see what Greg Watts has been up to. Um, have you got a message for the fellas that'll be watching these videos? And also, what have you thought of the videos that you've seen? No, I think the, the videos are, uh, you know, fantastic. Uh, you know, you often think about um, what what some of the guys have got up to. Um, just on, I saw someone put on the on the thread that you know Michael Stack is a as a uh, travel guide, my, uh, uh, for my 30th, uh, a couple of mates and myself went to Berlin for, uh, you know, just for the weekend. And um, we were staying at a hotel and we just, we were going to go on the, the walking tour. And the lady in the hotel said, oh yeah, there's a key that's run by, by a Kiwi guy. And he's, and he's famous because he wears his jandals. Um, no way. She probably didn't call him jandals. Yeah, I think he wears his jandals. I think she said shorts as well, but like even in the winter, right? So and I was like, oh, right, okay. So anyway, we rock up to do this tour and there's Michael Stack standing in front of us and it was brilliant. He took us around like he knew everything and uh, it was very entertaining and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it, you know? That's so, amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was it was quite a surprise. So, so clearly, so, clearly he remembered um, you, right? Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. And, um, but, um, you know, he, he's... It, it, it was good. He knew his history, and um, you know he's obviously been there. That's that was what 15, 16 years ago. Um, so he's he's been doing that. He's been doing that for a long time now. Um, but no, it was brilliant, and um, 
yeah. So I guess I was just I was to share that since I, I saw yeah. it on the thread. But yeah, no, it's good. Uh, it's good catching up and seeing what seeing what everyone's doing. Um, you know, you often wonder what what's happened to people. Uh, Huey Jew, I was going to say to you, if you can track I, that guy, just walked out on in sim form, and I, I never heard from him or seen him since. So I was wondering if anyone's seen what he's up to. Um, and uh, yeah, just wanted to obviously wish all the best to Mike Byrne. Uh, you know, uh, sorry to hear what happened to him, and, and hopefully his recovery is um, continues on the path to recovery. Um, and one other thing I didn't realise that I didn't realise there was a I got mentioned in the uh, nose by Shane Riley Club because I'm actually in that as well because he punched me in the nose. You're kidding and, uh, me. You know, Shane, punching a, Shane Riley. Punching a, how many is this now? We must be up to five. Punching a Lebanese guy in the nose, mate. <laughs> punching a Lebanese guy in the nose is probably the meanest thing you could do. <laughs> so. Oh look, I know. Look, I know Shane will be watching this, and he's 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 mortified. Um, but you know, um, hopefully, um, well, I know there's a lot of water under the bridge. Uh, yeah. oh, there's no hard feelings. No hard feelings. I think I was in the Aiden Byron Club. I don't. I don't know what I did either. I don't think I did anyway. But hey, that's all right. Oh, okay, my friend. Well, look, Greg. Great to see you, man. I think you're looking really well. Um, give our best to yeah, your fa give our best to yes. your um to your family. Um, the boys would love to come to your wedding when you finally pop that question. Um, there'll be another good reason to catch up. Um, but look, um, on behalf of all of us, stay safe over there. Um, and like I say, look after yourself and thank you for your time, brother. You're looking well. Cheers, Huge. Take it easy. There you go, guys. Greg Watts. Cheers. Cheers, mate. See you later.